Hello, everyone. This is Beyond with Extendly, and I've got uh, Sean, co-founder of High Level, with me today on this call. And uh, we're excited to talk about the reasons to upgrade to SaaS mode. Uh, Sean's talked about SaaS mode uh, quite a bit. And uh, we think it's a great option for agencies that are utilizing SaaS for themselves uh, and for their customers. Sean, what do you have to say about that? That's a great idea. Let's do it. All right. Perfect. So, Sean, we've put together five reasons. Uh, there's a bunch of them, but there's five top reasons that I've come up with that I think that are really, really important um, for people to know. Um, and I want you to help me uh, go through them Heck yeah. um, quickly here. Um, so guys, today, what we're going to learn on this uh, is what is SaaS mode? How can SaaS, SaaS Pro Plan help you? And what are those five reasons? And on top of that, we've got five bonuses for upgrading to the SaaS Pro Plan. All right. So, uh, Sean, I'm going to ask you this. What is SaaS mode and how do you think it can help people? Yeah. So I think that if we zoom back for a second and think about this idea, it's it's about saying, OK, you know, every business is going to use technology in addition to services um, to really achieve outcomes. So we all know software um, is a thing at this point, and we know our customers use it. But I think one of the, the misunderstood concepts is how the, this world sort of comes together. So a lot of people that I meet in the agency space sort of see themselves as the service provider, and they sort of outsource the technology to somebody they already know. And I think this, this idea is is very flawed because what it's really doing is giving away all the power and opportunity for revenue that is very sticky, that is very scalable, that is very profitable away to a third party company. And it also makes your life more difficult as a service practitioner, because now you have to sort of be at the beck and call of the, of the technology you encounter, which basically means, you know, one day could be this system, the next day could be another system, you're logging in and out, you're learning different skills, and oftentimes how to accomplish the same thing, right? And so what I think is really important about the future is that agencies are not only the, they're really in the driver's seat of not just the services that they provide, but also the technology that, that actually provides the end result, both on, on behalf of the customer and for and, and is something that the agency uses from, from their tool set, but also all the way down to the tools the actual customer themselves uses. I think it's really important that the agency be in the driver's seat for that and get the actual revenue credit for having done it. And really what this means is if you've ever had a customer you're providing some kind of service for, you tell, hey, could you go sign up with a software product? You put your heart and soul into that software product with all of the skills that you are you're, that you know, and then they get the weird impression that somehow that software, which is always cheaper, is doing all the hard work. And then they ditch you and keep the software. And at that point, you're out. The software vendor is in. Um, now we want to make it so that if they ever decide that they're going to cut those services, they still can do that. But now you have the revenue still coming in from the software and you can build that up over time into a beautiful recurring revenue business. Absolutely. I have to agree with that. So I operate an agency as well. And uh, you're always on the lookout, or at least you, I used to be always on the lookout for the better software. What's that, you know, uh, another software out there that I can use in the uh, in the stack of things? And I kid you not, there's generally anywhere from 5, 10, 15 softwares you're using for one client and you're trying to jimmy rig them all together to make it work. And that's one of the, by the way, that's one of the best things I love about High Level because it's one platform, everything's integrated, starting from your funnels, your websites, even those forms that you put on there. Normally, there's no CRM on the back end that's capturing all that data. It's just going to someone's email when, when a form gets filled out, right? That's true. You're actually creating contacts and you're being able to trigger automation uh, with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, there's a lot of features and functionality and I, and I, and all of that is awesome. And I think super important. And the cool thing about it is I used to think that, you know, you needed to have, you know, like I thought that the plumbers would always use plumber soft and lawyers would always use lawyer soft and it would be impossible to create a system that would have ubiquity. But the reality is that's not true. Um, most of the features that um, businesses need are, are very ubiquitous. Um, and and very si similar, and you can really create a system that where you as an agency, really what defines your niche or your agency or the value you create is the knowledge around those industries. But the actual tools themselves are incredibly similar, if not the same, when it comes to actually on the technology side in terms of servicing those clients. And so by, by bringing them in and standardizing them and all of that, that makes your life easier. But the other big thing is stop seeing software as a cost start seeing it as a revenue stream, right? You become the software company. You become the entity that is getting a recurring monthly fee 
for the software that the customer is using. That is the game changer here. That is the new way of really opening your mind to uh, taking it instead of thinking like, how do I save money on software or find more software, or glue it all together and Zapier and seven different other platforms, forget all that, bring it into one, but also make it a revenue opportunity, not just a cost. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that cost for subscription with other softwares com in comparison to high level is significant. The other software you're paying uh, sometimes a per user fee, but regardless of per account fee for any number of clients you have under it, right? Versus here at high level, it's $500 a month, not even, it's $497 per month. And you get the SaaS plan, which allows you to rebuild your customers and give them a subscription. And that 497, there's some confusion around this, but that 497 is just a one-time, not a one-time, but it's a flat monthly yes. fee. Yes. You as an agency uh, for all of your accounts, right? Correct. Now? That's right. And you're not just billing, remember, for the account itself. You're also able to bill for all of their email, phone, and texting usage. And you know anybody who uh, it, it deals with this in the real world sees customers, for example, who have, let's say you have text messaging software, go Google that, like test, text messaging software. You'll see that they charge you know, a penny a text or two, two cents a text, whatever it is. Here, you're taking the cost, just 0. 0.0075, and now you're marking it up to the penny and you're taking the spread, right? So you're able to, and, and, and a lot of people are like, oh, that's not very much money. You're, you're missing it. There's 25, 50, 75 bucks a month right there in usage that those businesses are already paying out to other platforms that yet now you're just going to capture on top of the recurring revenue for the software. And now, and, and you're providing tons of value, right? You're bringing all this in one place for them. You're making it easier on them. But I mean, you're also being able to create this util usage model as well, where you're able to bring in a lot of extra revenue. And, and it's, and if they were to say, well, I'm not going to, you know, you're, you're overcharging or whatever. You're like, go, go Google text messaging software and tell me what you come back with. You'll find that actually, I'm actually charging you at, at worst the same and probably a little under, but you as an agency are going to, are all of a sudden going to generate a ton more revenue than you'd ever imagine. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and uh, just, just so you guys know, if you're already on, on the uh, agency plan, which is 297 per month, it's only 200 bucks extra to upgrade to the 497 plan, which is what where the uh, SaaS mode comes into play. Yep. Uh, let's go to the next question here. All right, so uh, saving time is important and uh, SaaS mode allows you to automatically create uh, accounts when someone signs up. Sean, can you talk to a little bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, you know, in a in a perfect world, you know, so there's two ways I think about this. So first, you can sort of still be in the mode of sort of hand to mouth, where you're like really individually talking to customers and all of that, and and really getting them up and running. And in that case, even there, when it's sort of we'll call it lower volume, still having the step where the account automatically gets created, the user automatically gets an email letting them know their username and password. Um, you know, if you have a snapshot, which I, I hope all of you do, with all of the things you need for that person to get up and started for that all. To be pushed into their account. If nothing else, if you just sort of think about it on a selfish basis, that saves you a truckload of time when it comes to getting up and going with your customer. Um, but it also makes you look a lot more like what I want you to be, which is a SaaSpreneur where you have a platform because every other SaaS company you've ever signed up, every software platform, you get that email that says, hey, welcome to my SaaS, you know, this SaaS software company and here's your username and password. So it really helps you brand and look professional the way you want to. And then as you move into higher volumes and we have people who literally they're using SaaS as their front end offer, when you're onboarding, you know, 50, 100 signups a day, there's no way in the world you want to do that manually. And so having the capacity to have those accounts spun up, you add people to memberships, they get an invite with, and the membership has all the setup information, all the how to's and all of that. And you're literally getting your, your, your sign up to a point of value, which is the real key um, in order to feel like they're getting a lot out of that platform without having to actually do any phone calls or Zoom calls or one-on-ones, that's massive. Um, it allows you to scale your business up a lot faster. Yeah, so it's so a lot of time saving. You know, you you act like a software company as well. That that automatic email goes out with the username and password, and and uh, and they can access their account immediately. Yeah, uh, you got it. All right, uh, rebilling. You touched on this just a little bit uh, a few yep. seconds ago. This is huge. Uh, yeah, rebilling is a is a huge piece. Uh, I'll let you go more in detail here. 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, these are sorts of revenue opportunities. We look for these all the time. Um, and this is a really, but this is one of those things where, you know, you want to create an, a situation where as your customer is communi communicates more, right? So sends more emails, send more texts, and they're doing this for a good reason, right? They're getting a, va a lot of value out of it. They're, they're selling more things. They're getting more people to attend their events or come to their stores or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, but you're getting paid for that. And you're getting paid in the same way that, again, that other platforms are, get, are getting paid. So if you go out and look at any other platform that offers email or SMS, there is an underlying cost there that they're that they are charging on an incremental basis. Um, and you know, this is our way of giving you access to another revenue opportunity, even underneath the plan amount. And we have other examples of this, like Yext is an example for um, uh, that I would throw out there. And we'll continue to whether it's WordPress or anything else. We'll continue to find more and more versions of this, but the idea is that your customer is going to buy all of these products from somebody. They really ought to be buying them from you, and you should be making money off of each of these things that they're purchasing. And this gives you a really easy way to do that for the uh, SMS and email. Absolutely, yeah. There's no better way to put that there. Uh, in addition, it's an additional revenue generation for you. Oh, it, absolutely, and it adds up faster than you know. Yep, yep, yep. All right, fantastic. Uh, feature control with the SaaS configurator that you guys brought out. There's feature control and tiered pricing plans. Can you talk yep. to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, again, back to, you know, every software platform you've ever signed up for, right? Good, better, best. Um, you know, some people, um, and we'll continue to expand on this um, as well, by the way, but the idea is really simple. Um, you know, we're allowing you to uh, fix a price point both monthly and yearly for a certain feature set and um, do things like add free credits and even add snapshots that you want to start off with, all those things. And then as they buy into those plans, um, you're able to create additional upgrade opportunities, right? Because we don't just want to, I mean, no software platform has the one price. They always have, you know, three prices or 10 prices or whatever, right? But they generally start with three. It's the kind of the magic number. And it gives you an opportunity to say, well, hey, if you start with the low low plan, you get these features, the middle plan, you get the, you know, get the low end features plus, and then all, all the way up. And it gives you that expansion revenue model that you're looking for. So you can just kind of continue to bring your customers up, but also start them at a price point, maybe that some of them are going to say yes to. Whereas if you try to start all the way at the top, you know, you're going to lose a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. And this is huge because the, the $297 plan that high level offers, there's no feature control under that. You get the whole software, uh, you create the account manually, you give it to your customer, you, you create the username and password manually and you give it to them. And yeah. um, and, and you, they get to access the entire software in there. With this, you can leverage the fact to upsell the subscription to them. Even if you do want to offer the entire software, you can you can give them pieces of it at a time and make a higher revenue. And you really want to do that, right? Because the other thing is, you know, there, there's always going to be other things that go with it, right? So there's going to be snapshots, there's going to be support, there's going to be Q&A, there's going to be FAQs, there's going to be all of those things. And so you want to make sure that you're also getting rightly paid for the additional support load that you're going to take on in your organization as you add these features. Because let's say you give somebody like the workflow, the workflow has got to be the most complex, you know, do anything you want to do kind of thing out there. And invariably, people are going to have a lot of questions on that versus, you know, two-way SMS is pretty easy. Someone says, you know, you, you, you know, do you have that in blue? They text back, yes, I do. It's $20. Would you like to buy it? That's easier. So you want to charge differently for that because when somebody picks up the phone and says, hey, I built this workflow with 300 steps and it's not working, you want to have somebody who can actually help them with that. But that's not free. That costs money. So you need to charge for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they're not, uh, most business owners are not going to be tech savvy enough to be able to go in there and build their own workflows and realize what it needs to do. Right. Just like writing website copy, you got to do it for them. And so you got to charge an additional fee for that. Uh, I've got to tell you, Sean, uh, my favorite plan to sell here is the lowest tier plan, the standard plan, you know, with just the basic features, it has the, the, the lowest support related issues uh, and, and lowest churn because, uh, and it's, it's not overwhelming at all to the customer. Uh, they're, they love it, uh, because it's very, very simple to get started for them. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. I think most people overthink these things. And I, I think what they try to do is they try to, they, they figure that they think they're competing against Salesforce or something when it's, you know, most people are working with small business owners who are so behind the curve that the most basic of features that are very automated, that are very simple, will drive just a tremendous amount of value. Things like missed call text back. I always ask people, um, even advanced users, do you have missed call text back? Well, no, da, 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 this, that, and the other. It's like, give me a break. Missed call text back, one feature. You could charge 300 bucks a month for almost any business in, in North America and easily Pay, get paid back more than $300 worth of value as a small business owner just with that one feature. So 
simple features rule the day and are very much uh, worth building a business on. And I've got a personal testimony on the Miss Paul text box. Uh, so I, I own a few restaurants as well. They're pizza, uh, pizza restaurants. And when we bought them uh, last year, in November, the, uh, the the previous owner told us, hey, uh, one of the problems that if you guys can solve uh, is that whenever the staff gets busy, they stop answering the phone calls. So generally, you're going to miss a lot of orders, right? So for me, it was easy. I'm like, okay, perfect. We're going to turn on high level. We're going to turn on missed call text back. And in there, we added uh, an order online link. It's simply there said, yeah. we, we missed your call. It seems like we're busy. Did you know you can order online? And here's a link. Bingo. Yeah. And that has tremendously uh, uh, increased our uh, online ordering. Uh, it's literally doubled our online ordering from just using that every single time. Well, and if you think about what's cool about that is, you know, let's say I do call in and I talk to someone, hey, I'd like to order pizza. Okay, what do you want? Blah, 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 blah. Cool. I, I, you got the order and that's cool, but you didn't really get me. You didn't capture my lead, right? But if I order online, now you have an order and you've captured a lead. So then, oh, guess what? I, we haven't seen Sean buy a pizza in, in a month. Well, let's hit him with a coupon, right? So it fundamentally changes the game as well because you're you're also now capturing leads. All right, perfect. There's one piece I want to touch on here in, inside the uh, the feature set here, the web chat uh, feature. I get sometimes I get confusion around this uh, from people. They're always asking for uh, why isn't this a live chat instead of a text message? Oh yeah, I, I love that discussion. So, it, and I personally think it, it is. I am glad it is not a live chat because which business owner you know is sitting on their computer all the time and ready for that chat to pop in so they can answer back, right? None. And, and actually what I would, I would, I would expand that. And I would say what fortune 500 company is, is able to get back to you consistently in 10 seconds or less, right? Yeah. Zero. Um, even the, the heavyweights of this, the, the intercoms and the drifts of the world have moved almost exclusively to bots because they know their customers are terrible at it. And these are Highly funded, big brand name, lots of money, big staff, all this stuff. It is human nature that you are fighting against. And I will tell you, it is the silliest idea to fight against human nature. You're just fundamentally going to lose. And I would say, this is exactly why we don't do it. It makes people a ton of money because we don't do it. And anybody who asks that question, they just, you just always, ask, I would just say like, hey, listen, have you ever chatted live online with anybody? Like, have you, do you ever try to use this stuff? And they're like, Oh yeah, well, how do you like it? Do people get back to you instantly? Is it super simple? Like, oh no, it takes forever. And like, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I chatted with, I had to, I had to ask a question. I, I my wife sent me out to ask a question of a clothing brand recently. And it's like, I can't even remember what it is, but it was big. And it was like, we'll get, we'll, you know, don't worry, stay there. And I had to stay there because I was like, my wife will kill me if I don't get this answer. But it literally took them 20 minutes to get back to me, um, you know, and to get me this answer. And, you know, if I wasn't willing to sit there for 20 minutes, and, and, and unless we're, and I was an existing customer, we had this like, you know, it was a very deep relationship there. If you're just trying to like ask a quick question, see if this person's a good vendor, which is really where most people are at in the buying process, they're not sitting there for 20 minutes. I don't care what you say. So it's ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, they're going to leave. And most likely you haven't even captured their information versus here. You've got at least an email or a phone number. And when you're, when you, whenever you do get a chance to reply back, they're receiving it right on their cell phone and they're actually going to open it, see it, and they're going to be able to communicate with you. And they don't need to sit there in front of the computer waiting for you to respond. Well, and you know what's ironic about all this is that 99% of the time they're they're actually trying to achieve the same outcome. It's kind of like the pizza restaurant. Why 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 are people calling? Well, I, I bet I bet they're trying to order a pizza. So why are people chatting? Right? They're probably trying to get a pizza or a price quote or an estimate or book a call or whatever, right? And so 99% of the time you could be like, hey, thanks a lot for writing in. They can automate it, right? Like, hey, thanks for writing in. Um, we're going to get back to you, but um, do you need to book an appointment? If you do, click here. And right there, you will knock out 80% of the people. And then the people can just write back, oh, no, I didn't need an appointment. Blah, blah, blah is my question. Great. I'll get back to you. But for the people that want to book an appointment, boom, you're just booking people all day long. It's just money. Exactly. Yeah. Very can, simple. Yeah. Depending on what your use case is, you can you can have that automated and, and send them a link back to uh, to whatever that may be. Totally. Right. Fantastic. Um, 
All right, so automatically loading in snapshots. This is part of the uh, SAS configurator, but um, you can automatically load in snapshot, but there's more to that because there's three different plans. You can actually load in a snapshot for each, uh, a different snapshot for each different plan, right, Sean? Yep, that's right. And we'll actually expand this out. You'll see this uh, here uh, in the next couple months, but you'll even be able to go deeper on this and have even more plans because if you're in particular niches or something or multiple niches, you'll be able to handle that. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna we're gonna pump this up with is uh, also the a brand new template library that goes with this. But today, think about it like this: all the assets you create, workflows, landing pages, you know, I don't care, SMS templates, all that stuff. All, all almost all of that is literally the same stuff for every account that walks in the door. Being able to basically put that into an account right out of the gate without any work from you, and then having the user come in, see all of that stuff, and you can use custom variables. So let's say like you want to change taglines or logos or company names or all of that stuff, having that be dynamic um, is amazing. And you can do it all automatically using snapshots. And it's literally accelerating that adoption curve by, again, I'm not coming into a blank slate. I'm coming into a fully filled out picture that's ready to go. Exactly. So we have a small business uh, universal niche snapshot. It's We built in almost everything you, you need uh, in there to get an account started. Uh, and that's what we use. A bunch of my uh, clients use that as well. It just it speeds up the process to get a, get a new account started instead of you having to build everything out in there. Totally. Yeah. And we're going to continue with this. You know, we have a big template library upgrade that's coming. So you'll also be able to pre-do all of your templates um, if you want to. So the, or you can use, you can use, um, you can use your own templates, you can use our templates. But the idea is, you know, we want to make it so that when people walk through the door, you can literally say, okay, not only is all the stuff that I have pre-made for you in there, here's a bunch of other assets that you might be using or want to use. And now you as the as the agency in this situation, don't have to start over and make these custom things every time. If you already have a bunch, let's say you have plumbers and you have a, uh, you know, 365 day calendar of plumber posts that you want every plumber to just turn on for social media posting. You can pre-can all of that stuff and make it super easy for them to get going. And by the way, Snapshots is amazing. It's it's uh, it's exclusive to high level. But what other software uh, do you sign up for that you can actually have a preloaded account? I can't think of one. Uh, almost every one of them, you need to go in and set up everything for every single time you you get a new client to onboard that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here. And that's the idea. We really, really, really want to make it easy for people and simple for them to get out of the gate. And I think that this will help you do that. It'll help you, again, it'll help you scale. Um, and it'll just give a lot more value to your customer because they're not, it's not like everyone else they sign up for. It's this blank slate. You're they're ready to go out of the gate. Yep, absolutely. All right. Building portal. So since yeah. since Fast plan. You got to act like a software, and you're definitely making it look like a software. Uh, Sean, talk to us about the billing portal. Uh, yeah, here. I mean, it, it's funny because on one hand, it's like the most boring thing ever, but on the other hand, it's incredibly important, right? So, hey, I, 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 you know, I need to change my card on file. Oh, no problem. Log in to change your card to file. Oh, I, I got hit with a, you know, twenty two dollar and seventy seven cent charge. Why? Oh, no problem. Go and check it out. Here's your link to your invoice. Click, see details, dig in on the balance, see exactly what all the charges for, really drill down on it, really just all the things, honestly, that you, we all would expect signing up for a software company. But now you're not getting the phone calls, you're not getting the emails, you're not getting the, hey, why is this? Is You're like, oh, just go to the billing portal. It's all right there for you. So we're making it really, 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 really simple for people to basically self-manage when it comes to billing um, and what they're getting charged for. Yeah, fantastic. And there's there's one other thing that I uh, that I love about uh, this right here that you can actually add credits uh, to them as well. You can give them free credits if you want uh, to allow uh, to, against Twilio and whatnot uh, to be charged. So if if you ever have a you know an issue with a customer and the customer is pissed for whatever reason and 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 you need to you know make make it up to them, you can go in and add some credits and make them happy there. Absolutely, yeah. And again, just like I mean, we do this for our own customers. I mean, everybody should be doing this, right? Anytime somebody complains, that you you have this capacity to do something nice for them. And I think that's. I think that's a really smart strategy. Yep, absolutely. All right, fantastic. So now uh, the bonus part. So there's there's five bonus reasons uh, uh, why you should upgrade uh, and how to do that. So uh, obviously we're, we're an affiliate. Uh, we've been with them for a long time. And um, going through learning about high level, we've built a bunch of different services. Um, Extendly was born um, out of that. So if you upgrade through our uh, affiliate link, which is listed right there, getextendly.com slash high level, 
Um, you you may be on the 297 plan. You uh, you want to get to the 497 SAS mode plan. All you got to do is go to our website and you get all of these things. You get the, the extended 30 day trial to try out the SAS mode uh, without being charged for it. Um, you get six months of free tech support directly from us to ask us any questions have about your agency anything you're any anything you're running against and you can't figure it out we'll, we'll be there to help you my team uh will create you a private slack channel just for you and your team and you'll be able to ask any questions in there um we'll we'll do a, a dashboard customization free of charge to you uh we'll even uh look at your twilio and mailgun setup and optimize them if, uh, if in case they're not um uh set up properly and uh, I talked about uh, a little bit about our small business snapshot that we have. Um, so if you're upgrading, you get $500 off. Normally it's $995, but you get $500 off of uh, that uh, snapshot there. Um, and by the way, a bunch of our customers use that snapshot. I would say over a thousand different businesses uh, from number of agencies we've uh, supplied to use it today. It's been tested, proven, uh, and it makes it really, really easy to uh, get started uh, with a new account. All right, we're going to open it up for uh, questions and answers here. Uh, does anyone have any questions that uh, you, you you have you have a question? <laughs> oh, I do. Are you are you going to the event in Dallas? That's that's what that's what you're getting asked. I really really want to. So I'm running into an issue here. We're we're uh, we're we're going to a wedding and it happens to be right at the same time. So my plan is I'm going to fly in on Monday and fly out Tuesday. Uh, Who to in the world gets married in October? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so it's some right before family. Halloween. Come on, people. For Halloween, some some family members are deciding to do that. Oh, uh, wow! Well, what can you do? You know, you gotta you gotta love your family. So I, I respect that reason. Yeah, I was almost talking to my wife. I'm like, can I bill on this? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't. And I I just got that look, and I'm like, okay, never mind. We're Christmas is not Thanksgiving, and Christmas are not going to be good if you bail on the wedding. Absolutely, absolutely. So, <laughs> my uh, that's my plan. There looks like we um, had no other uh, questions. Wow, here. I love it when I just blow the questions out. That's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Sean, thank you very much for taking the time to. Yeah, go. thanks for having me, man. It was great to be here. All right, you have a good one. All Take right, care. bye everybody.